Well, in theory, um, uh, he, he, he's very against China because he hates socialism and he hates, and he, uh, yeah, again, he called them assassins. But, you know, the basic fact is out of, he has an $18 billion swap line with China and he has virtually no other reserves. So that, I think, exercises some degree of caution on him. There's a kind of row here at the moment to do with the space station which the Chinese are building down in Patagonia, which sadly I didn't get to visit. But they, they're building it there, and the US is saying, look, this is a military purpose. And there's a sort of, that was sort of an opportunity for Millet to say, no, I'm going to close it down for you. It's sort of obvious at the moment that he's, he's unlikely to do that. And so he's having to, you know, he's having to deal with it. It's not, it's not, it, we've got a long big take about this today. You know, you have this man who's come in really advocating exactly the obvious opposite of everything that China is. But he is having to make compromises. And one rather weird part of it is actually the Chinese are no longer investing quite so much in Latin America as they did. But Argentina is unusually on the hook to them. So they have dramatic degrees of leverage here. It's one of the most extraordinary economic experiments I think anyone has seen. I've been coming to Argentina since the 1980s. I interviewed uh, Carlos Menem, who also has rather magnificent sideburns back here then. He tried to bring down inflation. It ended up in riots and, and civil unrest and stuff like that. This man, Millet, is somebody who is a free market fundamentalist. He calls his dogs after people like Milton Friedman. He used to be an economics professor, and as you heard there, he hates profoundly the idea of central banks printing money. So his long-term aim, he still claims, is to dollarize the economy, close down the central bank, and replace the dollar with the peso, replace the peso with the dollar. It, the truth and what's happening in between, and it's, he's, he's somewhat discursive in his answers, I think would be a way of putting it. Um, um, behind that, it looks like he's having to compromise a little bit for two reasons. Firstly, he hasn't got much support in Congress. He himself is popular, but he doesn't have many people from his party in Congress. And secondly, because I think there is a limit to how much pain Argentines can take. The inflation rate here is, you know, he's reduced it to 13% a month. It's still unbelievably high and people's savings, people's money is disappearing regularly. John, what Argentina is going through a humanitarian crisis. I've been saying it for a long time. Once again, we see families and children rummaging through the garbage to try to put something in their bellies. We are not going to sit idle in the face of this reality. When these people explode, they explode. So we're telling the government to pay attention to what is happening and to resolve the situation of hunger that they are creating. There are enough reasons so that the three central unions discuss a national strike and demand a change to this government. Javier Miles' presidency is turning into a chaotic spectacle of broken promises and political hypocrisy, a testament to the downfall of Argentina's dreams. The self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist who stormed into office with a pledge to sever ties with China likening them to an assassin, now finds himself bending over backwards to accommodate Beijing's insidious influence in a desperate attempt to salvage an economy that he himself has plunged deeper into crisis. Miley has revealed his true colors, a leader who talks big but bows to the highest bidder. His initial fiery rhetoric against China was nothing but a smokescreen, hiding the inevitable reality that Argentina's economic survival is chained to the whims of a foreign power. This is not just a story of a failing economy, but a tale of betrayal of a leader who has sold out his nation's sovereignty for short-term gains and political expediency. Stay with us till the end as we unravel the scandalous details of Miley's controversial U-turn, his hypocritical policies, and the looming shadow of China over Argentina. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Check YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, You've come to the right. Please subscribe, like, and comment to help boost our videos on YouTube. Javier Maile only needs to lean out the window of the presidential palace in downtown Buenos Aires to be confronted with Argentina's ties to China. About a mile distant on the banks of the River Plate stands the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China building, a towering monolith emblazoned with the ICBC logo that dominates the capital's skyline. It's a symbol of how deeply entrenched China is in Argentina's economy. Maile 
a libertarian economist with little political experience, rode to victory in last year's election, promising to tear up Argentina's old ways to tackle its endemic failings that included curbing long-standing ties with China. Would you trade with an assassin? He asked then, in the four months since entering the pink-hued presidential palace known as the Casa Rosada. He's devalued the peso, announced 70,000 state job cuts, and done away with price controls. He's embraced the U.S. and courted former President Donald Trump, yet with annual inflation at a vertiginous 276 percent. He hasn't followed through to downgrade China ties. Trade relations between China and Argentina haven't changed one bit, and he has no intention of touching an $18 billion currency swap with Beijing, Mylai says, a joint space station with China that the U.S. has warned against isn't a problem. We have always said that we are libertarians, Mali told Bloomberg editor-in-chief John Micklethwaite in an interview yesterday. If people want to do business with China, they can, to some extent. It's a recognition of fact. Chinese trade and investment now drive large swaths of Argentina's economy and commodities, energy, and ba- But Miley's approach also shows that despite his carefully crafted image as a wild man, the self-styled anarcho-capitalist has a pragmatic side. It's a reminder that all politicians are forced to bend to reality once in office, whatever they tell voters beforehand. Just a quick reminder to hit the like button below. YouTube has been restricting my videos a lot recently because of bots. So your like does help out this video massively in terms of the algorithm in YouTube. Miley's initial stance on China was bold and provocative. His rhetoric painted China as a villainous presence, insinuating that any dealings with the Chinese were morally questionable. This narrative was likely designed to resonate with a domestic audience frustrated with Argentina's economic woes and looking for an external scapegoat. The promise to sever ties with China was, in essence, a pledge to break away from the status quo and forge a new path. However, the reality of governance has proven more complex. China's economic influence in Argentina is not something that can be easily dismantled. The Industrial and Commercial Bank of China building in Buenos Aires is not just a structure. It's a representation of significant Chinese investments in the country. These investments span various sectors, from lithium mines near the Bolivian border in the north to a port 2,500 miles away. At the country's southern tip, the lithium mines, in particular, are of strategic importance. Lithium is a critical component in the production of batteries, and as the world shifts towards renewable energy and electric vehicles, the demand for lithium is skyrocketing. China, recognizing this, has positioned itself as a major player in the global lithium market, and its investments in Argentina are part of this strategy. For Argentina, these investments are a source of much-needed foreign capital and economic activity. Similarly, the port at the southern tip of Argentina is a crucial part of China's Belt and Road Initiative a massive infrastructure project aimed at expanding China's global trade network. The port enhances Argentina's connectivity and trade capabilities, providing a boost to its economy. Cutting off ties with China would mean jeopardizing these significant economic benefits. Miley's pragmatism in maintaining the $18 billion currency swap with Beijing is another indication of his understanding of Argentina's economic realities. This swap is a crucial tool for stabilizing Argentina's currency and providing liquidity in times of economic stress. Given Argentina's current economic turmoil, with soaring inflation and a devalued peso, this swap is more important than ever. Abandoning it would be tantamount to economic suicide. Furthermore, the joint space station with China, despite U.S. warnings, is a testament to the strategic and technological collaboration between the two countries. This project is not just about space exploration. It's about advancing scientific research and technological development. For Argentina, participating in such a project elevates its status on the global stage and opens up opportunities for technological advancements and innovation. Miles' decision to retain these ties with China reflects a broader trend in global politics, where economic pragmatism often trumps ideological posturing. While his anti-China rhetoric may have been effective in garnering votes, the realities of governance have necessitated a more nuanced approach. This shift is not unique to Argentina. Many countries find themselves navigating a complex web of economic dependencies and strategic interests in their dealings with China. Milet's balancing act between his libertarian principles and the practical demands of governance underscores the challenges faced by many political leaders. It's easy to make bold promises on the campaign trails, 
but the intricacies of international relations and economic interdependencies often require a more measured approach. In Miley's case, this has meant acknowledging China's significant role in Argentina's economy and finding ways to work within this framework, rather than attempting to dismantle it. The devaluation of the peso and the announcement of 70,000 state job cuts were part of Miley's broader economic reform agenda. These measures were aimed at addressing Argentina's chronic inflation and fiscal deficit issues by reducing the size of the public sector and allowing the currency to find its market value. Miley hoped to create a more efficient and competitive economy. However, these reforms have also led to significant social and economic challenges, including increased unemployment and reduced purchasing power for ordinary Argentines. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video and comment. The removal of price controls, another key element of Miley's economic reforms, was intended to stimulate market competition and reduce distortions in the economy. Price controls, while aimed at protecting consumers, often lead to shortages and black markets. By lifting these controls, Miley aimed to encourage production and ensure the availability of goods. However, this move also contributed to the inflationary pressures, making basic necessities more expensive for the average Argentine. Mali's embrace of the U.S. and his courting of Donald Trump were part of his strategy to strengthen Argentina's ties with Western powers. This approach was in line with his libertarian ideology, which favors free markets and individual liberties. However, the complexities of international relations have meant that Miley has had to navigate a delicate balance between aligning with the U.S. and maintaining beneficial ties with China. The libertarian philosophy that Miley espouses emphasizes minimal government intervention in the economy, individual freedom, and free market capitalism. This ideology informed his initial stance against China, which he perceived as a communist authoritarian regime. However, the practicalities of governance have forced him to adopt a more pragmatic approach, see recognizing that Argentina's economic well-being is intricately linked with Chinese investments and trade in the broader context of global politics. Miley's predicament is not unique. Many countries find themselves in a similar position trying to balance ideological commitments with the practical demands of economic and strategic interests. The rise of China as a global economic powerhouse has reshaped the dynamics of international relations, creating new opportunities and challenges for countries around the world. For Argentina, the challenge lies in leveraging its economic ties with China to drive growth and development while managing the political and social implications of these ties. This requires a careful balancing act. As Mylai has discovered, his experience underscores the importance of pragmatism in politics and the need for leaders to adapt to changing realities while staying true to their core principles. As Mylai continues to navigate these complexities, Simis administration's approach to China will be closely watched both domestically and internationally. The decisions he makes will have far-reaching implications for Argentina's economy and its position on the global stage, whether he can successfully balance his libertarian ideals with the practical demands of governance remains to be seen, but his ability to do so will be a key determinant of his presidency's success. In the meantime, Argentina's economic challenges continue to mount. The high inflation rate, coupled with the struggling economy, presents significant hurdles for Miley's administration. Addressing these issues requires not only bold reforms, but also careful management of the country's international relationships. China, with its substantial investments and economic influence, remains a critical player in this equation. Miley's ability to navigate these challenges will be a test of his leadership and his commitment to Argentina's long-term prosperity. His initial anti-China rhetoric may have garnered support, but the realities of governance have necessitated a more pragmatic approach. This evolution in his stance reflects the complexities of international politics and the need for leaders to adapt to changing circumstances. As Argentina grapples with its economic challenges, the relationship with China will continue to be a focal point of my life's administration. The decisions made in this regard will have significant implications for Argentina's future, shaping its economic trajectory and its role in the global community. For my life, the challenge lies in finding a balance between his libertarian ideals and the practical demands of governance, a task that will define his presidency and his legacy. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one?
If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content, so please keep supporting us. Check out this video showing on your screen right now, and I will see you on the other side.